the top 10 medieval doomsday predictions. 10. Planetary alignment of 1524. In 1524, all five known planets were going to enter a type formation. It was predicted by the various cultures around the world who recognised this phenomena that it would lead towards some kind of great event. In China there were predictions that it was going to be the coming apocalypse. It seemed that the omens were a warning and by heeding the warning you could avert the event. In the Western world many scholars predicted the birth of a new prophet. Many spoke of an epoch making event, some kind of dramatic change which included the possibility of the fall of the Catholic Church, the fall of royal houses and a coming apocalyptic flood. 9. Joachim of Fayor he was born into the court of Norman kings of Sicily around 1135. On an Easter morning on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land he underwent a spiritual conversion claiming to receive a vision that gave him an unprecedented understanding of the book of Revelation. According to Joachim history would consist of three eras mirroring the Holy Trinity the Old Testament was the first, the Father. The New Testament was the second, the Son. And the third was the time of the Holy Spirit. The claim was that the Antichrist would come soon before the end to bring about the end of the Third Age. 8. Columbus's Book of Prophecies Near the end of his life, Columbus returned to Spain returned and tried to secure funding for one last epic voyage. A voyage to Jerusalem to retake the Holy Land. To back up his claim he produced a book of prophecies containing texts and verses that said liberating the Holy Land would spark the apocalypse and the return of the Messiah to earth. One of these prophecies stated that the world's last emperor, a Spanish ruler, would secure the release of the Holy Land. Turkish blockades kept the invaders west from reaching the Holy Land. But Columbus planned in vain to use the funding he had gained, including his own treasures, to sail around the world, getting to Jerusalem through the Indies. 7. Servetus and the demon popes. A Spanish theologian, Servetus, became the personal confessor of Charles V in 1530. He became disillusioned with riches and wealth of the church. Within the Catholic Church he was deemed to be too questionable, far too Protestant, too much of a rebel in the face of the power of Rome. But in his work about the restoration of Christianity, which was published in 1553, that got him the attention of the church authorities. His teachings were very different from the conventional ideas of the church. Within his work, Servetus wrote that humans were touched by grace and they can overcome sin, ascending as divine beings. He described the devil as being part of God. The devil had created the papacy, the church hierarchy, and that this establishment of leaders was directly created by the devil to prevent Christ from returning. And his prediction was that the Archangel Michael would return to earth to end this madness along with the world in 1585. 6. Martin Luther and more demon popes. Best known for heading up the Protestant Reformation and having a strong stance against indulgences, he believed that the church was being controlled by Satan. 
that it was manipulated by evil, and that the Pope, wearing a crown, was basically the Antichrist. When Luther began printing copies of the Bible, he illustrated it, showing the Pope as the Antichrist, making people believe this to be the case. Even those who could not read saw the pictures, the seven-headed beast and the whore of Babylon wearing a papal crown. Luther felt the end days were nigh, and by deciphering the book of Revelation and its symbolism, he could work out when it would occur. He believed that the Jews became the enemy. The Pope was the Antichrist, trying to undermine the good workings of the church from the inside. 5. The Taborites In 1415, the Taborites were a militant group of revolutionaries that thought they could speed up the Second Coming. They believed by ridding the world of sin, they could bring on the coming of Christ. The leader, Jan Hus of Prague, agreed to attend the Council of Constance as long as he was assured safe conduct. The council had been formed to hear oppositional views on the Catholic Church, and Hus's oppositional views were some of the strongest available. But once he arrived at Constance, he was seized and burned at the stake as a heretic. His followers, the Taborites, took this opportunity to declare the Pope as the Antichrist and preach that the end of the world was on the way. They massacred countless groups of those they deemed to be heretics, those loyal to Rome and to the established church. They armed peasants and took on the armies of the church. Although they proved themselves to be an inconvenience a thorn in the side of Rome. Eventually, over the next couple of decades, they were slowly wiped out. 4. Theora the Heretic In 847, a strange woman made her way to the Carolingian court in Mainz, Germany. She claimed to have been visited by the Divine, receiving given insight into the future of mankind. She knew the apocalypse would come, before the end of the year. This woman was such a charismatic speaker that not only did the commissioners begin to bring her money and gifts, but members of the clergy began to follow her teachings as well. However, when she was called before the Archbishop to a meeting of other heads of the church, under questioning she admitted all of her divine knowledge actually came from a priest. The bishop decided the fairest sentence for her and her deception was public beating. 3. Pierre de Ailly An astrologer born in France in 1350, he attained a degree as well as within theology and other arts, trying to understand how to predict future events. Combining that with his religious views, he came up with a number of predictions. By his calculations, the Antichrist would appear on Earth in or around 1789. Bravely, he presented his findings to the Pope, even though many scholars had already denied the possibility of making an accurate prediction as to the end of the world. His prophecy was an important one, influencing many of the future supporters of the end of the world theories, including the explorer Christopher Columbus. 2. Betus of Libana A Spanish monk born around 730 AD during the Islamic occupation of southern Spain. By his mid-forties he produced a 12-volume work on the book of Revelation and the writings of the prophet Daniel. In it he decreed that the world would end by the year 800. Each time a projected year of the world's end came and went, the texts were re-examined and a new date selected. 1. Thomas Mutzer Originally a student of Martin Luther, first exposed to the idea of a Christian apocalypse through Luther's teachings, 
As with many Christians through the ages, he saw parallels between the struggles in the Bible and the ongoing conflicts and events he saw around him in the early 1500s. Due to his concerns, he started to do something that was very dangerous for the time, preaching to the discontent masses. He started preaching to the peasants of Germany, saying that them fighting the landowners who were oppressing them was a battle in which they had God on their side. He instigated 8,000 peasants to revolt against the German nobility in 1525. He convinced them that Christ would join them momentarily. During the battle, a rainbow conveniently appeared. Mutzer pointed, claiming it was a sign. The angels were coming to aid the peasants. Unfortunately, it was just a rainbow. By the end of the day, 5,000 peasants were dead, and Mutzer was eventually found hiding under his bed. He was captured, tortured, and executed. There are no more barriers to cross. All I have in common with the uncontrollable and the insane, the vicious and the evil, all the mayhem I have caused and my utter indifference toward it, I have now surpassed. 